everything is set up now. Okay, so I apologize for not being able to lecture last week. If you have questions about last week, please let me know and we can go over some slides. And if any of you looked at the YouTube channel, there are actually recordings that were there from Module 1. So tonight we are talking about strings and lists. So, because a, a string is a list. Um, and in Python, just about everything's a string. Python assumes a string unless you tell it otherwise. So what is a string? It's just an ordered collection of characters surrounded by quotes. That is all a string is. There's nothing magical about it. If you're writing a sentence, and you surround it by quotes, and you add it to a variable, you have a string. It's important to understand that strings are immutable. What do I mean by immutable? Strings can't be changed. So there are functions you can use on a string to create a new string that's modified how you want it to be, but you can't actually change a string, and that's what immutable means. It cannot be changed, um, but it doesn't mean you can't create a new one from it with the change in it. So, if you see something like this in a script, Meister, now just to let you know, and I'll say this through next week, I'll sound like a broken record, we know Meister is a variable because it is on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. And I say single equal sign on purpose because there's also a double equal sign coming next week and they are two different things. So I have a variable called myster. The value in the variable myster is this is a string. So I have created a string in Python with just that one line of code. Okay, so what does Python see? Python sees a variable name of myster and then it actually sees what we call a collection or a list. And the collection is the individual characters. Now you'll notice in all of these boxes that there excuse me, are letters and spaces. So everything in a string has to be an element in that list or in that collection. And it's important to look at a string like this because it will help you figure out how to modify or create a modified copy of the string later. All right, so rule. For every open quote, you must have a closing quote of the same type. Python allows you to use single quotes or double quotes to create a string. But you cannot open a string with a double quote and, and close it with a single quote. Python will give you an error. So what is not a string? You see this in your script. This is what Python sees. This is a string. There is a syntax error because you are missing a quote. Now why am I going through kind of these syntax errors? And it's because these are common mistakes that I have seen students make and they get frustrated with them because programming is about nitpicking. I mean, a programming language is a nitpicky thing. So I want to help students not make these mistakes or at least understand when they're getting weird syntax errors what's happening. The other one, as I said before, you can't open it with a double quote and close it with a single quote. That's another syntax error. And here is another syntax error. I've got an opening double quote. Somewhere in there, I've got another double quote, and then I've got a closing double quote. Python doesn't know what you mean here, so it's always going to try closing it at the, the second double quote. The first double quote is to open. The second double quote will be to close, and Python doesn't know to, what to do with that third or anything after that second double quote. So for every open quote, you have to have a closing quote of the same type. So let's see how to correct these errors. All right, so how do I correct this error? Well, I simply add a closing quote. How do I correct this error? Open double quote. 
close single quote. I change that by just closing with a double quote. And then I have this odd three quote situation. So I have a double quote in the middle of my string. And there are actually two things you can do. You can escape it with a backslash, or you could use a single quote. You could surround this by single quotes. So, um, so if there's a closing quote as the, of the same type as the opening, sorry, if there's a quote inside a string that is the same kind as the opening and closing quote, you need to escape it. And that's what the backslash does. Um, what do we mean by ordered list of collections? So order is important with lists and strings are lists. So basically what you have is you have your collection. This is a string. But what Python also gives you is it gives you an index. And an index value is just that. It's a number that corresponds to the place in the string of a given letter. And it always starts at 0. So this is our first foray into lists. And so there's going to be some new terminology, and one of them is the concept of an index. So when you see this is a string, and then I've got this row of numbers underneath it, what I am doing is I am showing you the index that Python automatically assigns to each of those letters. So, and it always starts with zero. Lists always start at index of zero. That can throw people off sometimes. That's just the way they do it. You can't start it at 1. You always have to start it at 0. So there's a relationship here. T is, um, sorry, my string at index 0 is the value of T. My string at index 1 is the value of H, and so forth. So Python keeps track of the order using those numbers. So here's a way to read it. T is at index 0, H is at index 1, I is at index 2. So that's just a way to read it when you're looking through your code and trying to understand what's happening. Um, every string has a numerical placeholder. It's called an index. So let's do this. Let's stop here for a minute. And let's see. Uh, simple string. Let's see what's in here. OK. That's not what I want, strings. OK. So this is what I want. By the way, everybody, this is PyCharm. So PyCharm is what you're going to need to use for several of your projects. And I use it, I think it's a great IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. One of the reasons I think it's a great IDE is because I can use the debugger. And I'm a big fan of the debugger because it shows you what is happening as a line of code is executed. Because that's all a program is. It is a series of lines of code that instruct the computer to do something. And those lines of code have an order. Based on that order, things are going to happen. So here we have a program written in Python that is just a series of commands. So let's take a look at this really quick. So I'm going to set up, whoops, my bad. I got to, sorry, I got to edit my configuration really quick. It's just string, right? Uh, and module two. What? Hold on. I'm in string.py. Sorry. Yeah, module two. Oh, 
potential too. Yeah. I think I can't spell. I don't see string.py here. Anyway, yeah, it's under... Oh, you're right. Thank you. So, I'm going to run this in the debugger, and part of this is also just to show you what a debugger does and how the, it's powerful. Because as you start to get into branching and loops and your game, it can really help save you time. This is just going to be a simple run. So there's a few things to look at. First of all, I had to set up the configuration, as everyone saw, because I couldn't find my program. Um, then what I have here is a red dot. That red dot is called a breakpoint, and it tells Python when to stop running. So I take the breakpoint off, and Python's just going to run through all the lines. So if I just hit the run, this is run, and this is debug. If I just hit run, stop and rerun, it's going to do this. But if I want to step through the lines of code and see what's happening, I can hit this little guy. It looks like a bug. Are you guys okay um, with the sound? Or is there something else going on? Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm glad everybody's sound is okay. So what, what you can do when you run the debugger, which is this little guy right here, um, you can see what's actually happening when you execute a line of code. So let's run the debugger. And what you'll see down, and I'm sorry I can't make all of this bigger, but down here in the lower left hand where my mouse is circling, that is a lot of extra information that we get while the program is running. Now, I usually concentrate on variables. Variables show me what variables I have defined in my current scope. Now, let, next week, we're going to start talking about scope. This week, everything's in the global scope. It's OK. But I like to start using the terminology so that next week, it's not the first time we've heard it. So what I have is I have a variable called myster. It is of type stir or string in Python. And that's what it's showing us down here under the variables. And the value is this is a string. Very simple. So now I want to print. And what I'm going to print is the value at index 0. And if I mouse over it, if I mouse over that 0, hold on, can I get there again? It tells me that the value at index 0 is t. And that corresponds to this T right here. So I'm going to step over, because there are things you can do when you're in the debugger. Right now I'm stopped. And I know I'm stopped because this blue line is showing up. And wherever that blue line is in the debugger is what the line of code is that is about to be executed. This, the code at line 4, has not been executed by Python. Python is waiting for me to tell it to execute. So I'm going to tell it to execute by stepping over. It's the bent arrow. And when I step over, I'm going to go to the console, and you're going to see the letter T. Now, that's what I would expect, because my stir at index 0, and that's what that terminology is, is a T. My stir at index 1 is an H. At index 2 is an I. At index 3 is um, an S. And then here I've got a type conversion, just I think because I added it the last time I was talking. But basically, if you want to concatenate a, an integer in a string, you have to turn it into a string. So that's what this is doing. 
But that is the use of the debugger. There's also some terminology that we see here, and we'll go over it a little bit in a minute. But I wanted to introduce you guys first to the debugger and also getting the concept of what that index is. So let's go back. Is everybody okay? Okay. And continue on with the presentation for a little bit. So we're about to foray into lists. Why are we for a, why are we, you know, we just started talking about strings. Why are we talking about a list? Because a string is a list. It's just a special kind of list. It doesn't have the ability to do everything that a list does. But it is a list. So we have to kind of understand what is happening with lists before we can fully understand what's going on with strings. So a list is an ordered collection just like a string is. Um, you can have just about any, anything in a list. You can have another list in a list. You can have a dictionary. You can have an object. You can have anything you want in a list. Python is very flexible. Um, and lists are mutable, and a mutable list means it can be changed. So what you see in your script, my list, we know my list is a variable because it is on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of a single equal sign, we have some new uh, syntax. We have this open square bracket, which our left square bracket, and then I have a string called Lisa, and I have the number 42, and I have the number 3.14, and a closed square bracket. Well, what do, does all that mean? Well, the open and closed square bracket when you're defining a variable is telling Python there's a list. There's, there, this is going to be a list. This variable is going to have a list. Now that list might be empty, that list might be populated, but it's going to be a list. So what Python is going to see is it's going to say I have a variable called my list and I have three values. The values of my list are Lisa, and Lisa is at index 0. I have the number 42, it's an integer, and it's at index 1. And I have the number 3.14, which is a float, and it's at index 2. Now this tells us also that in Python, you can have different types in the list. So I can have strings, I can have integers, I can have objects, I can have floats, I can have whatever I want inside of a list. Um, so I've got the open square bracket, I've got an element followed by a comma, followed by another element, followed by a comma, followed by another element, father, uh, followed sorry, by the closed square bracket. And this is a pattern and it's meant to be a pattern. Whenever you have an individual element in a list, if it is not the last element in the list, then you have to separate it and the next element using a comma. So between every element in your list, there has to be a comma. Don't put a comma after the last one. It's only as a separator between the different elements. And the opening square bracket and the closing square bracket tell Python that it's a list. Okay, lists always start with an opening and a closing square bracket. A list can contain elements of any types. Um, all lists have a corresponding index, no different than a string, and everything is separated by a comma, which is different from a string. A string, you don't separate out any of the elements because it's a special list. So you're going to hear me talk about CRUD in this class, even though Zybooks doesn't talk about it. CRUD is an acronym, and the acronym stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. What can you do with a list? You can create a list. You can read data from a list. You can update the elements in a list. And you can delete the list. You can either delete elements from the list, or you can delete the entire list. So that's what CRUD stands for. And I'm going to be using it throughout this class whenever we deal with collections. 
Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about CRUD. And I can create an empty list. So there's no elements between the brackets. So the list is empty. I can create a populated list, just like we saw before. And I have elements in the list, and those elements are separated by commas. I can access the list, so I can read information from the list. I can, if I print my list of zero, I will get Lisa. So here's how that syntax works. I'm going to use the print function. I'm going to use the variable name. The variable name in this case is my list. And then I'm going to open with, a, I'm going to use the opening square bracket. And then I'm always going to use the index. So this is where that index value becomes very important. Because that's how Python is going to know which value to pick out of the list. You can't say, get me Lisa. The way you get the value Lisa is you put that the right index value in there. So I'm going to use the index value 0, and Python's going to say, OK, I'm going to go to the index of 0, and I'm going to pluck that value out, and I'm going to use that value. So that value is Lisa. So that's how we read from a list. It's also how you're going to read from a string. And I can also print my list too. Same thing. Python's going to go and it's going to say, OK, I've got my list. My list is a list. I know this. Python will know it because it's already defined my list. And then it will say, I've got an opening square bracket. Oh, have the number 2. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the number 2. And the number 2 has a value 3.14. So I'm going to print. 3.14. So that's how that works in Python. And I can update it. Now, this is different than strings. I can update a list, which means I can modify the list without having to make a copy of it. So if I want to change the value at index 1 in my list, I simply say my list open square bracket, the number 1, which is the index number, close square bracket, equal 25. And what it will do is Python will go out and it will erase what was in the value that was associated with index 1. It will erase it, and it will put the new value in its place. Um, I can also add to a list. There's a function called append. Python gives you, um, you use that function on the list itself. So you'll see my list dot. My list is the name of the variable. Dot just says Python. Use this, the, the function name after the dot on the list before the dot. So that's how they're related. And then I'm going to give it the value that I want to append. And append always goes to the end. So I'm appending to the end, and I've just appended the word add. And now there are four elements in my list. There used to be three. When I have appended, there are now four. Delete. I can basically do the same thing. I now have a my list. I want to get rid of the first element in that list. The way I get rid of the first element in that list is I use a keyword called DEL. And DEL will go out and it will remove whatever is at that element. Now, you have to understand it's also going to reorder because it's not ever going to start with one. Lists always start with zero. So it's going to re-index. So if you remove the first thing from that list, so thing, everything gets Renumbered. So you, you, we did have Lisa was at 0. Now we have 25 is at 0. So you can also remove an element from a list 
by giving it the value. So this is the one of the one of the things that works by value rather than necessarily by index. I can remove the word add, and I do that by saying remove add, and Python will go out and it will find the value of it will find add as a value, and it will remove that particular element from the list. And then you can just say del my list, and it deletes the entire list. So let's go take a look at CRUD. So I'm going to edit the configuration. OK. So this is just a little function I came up that basically does a lot of what we just talked about function uh, program that basically does what we just talked about. But what I want to do is I kind of want to walk through this so you can physically see what's happening. And then I'm going to break some things. I'm going to remove some commas so we can see what error messages we're going to get when this isn't all perfect and working. So I've got my breakpoint, my little dot. And by the way, the way you do that is any line you want to stop on, you just put, just click by the number, and it will stop. Right now, I'm just going to stop at the top of the program, and I'm going to walk through. So I'm going to hit the debugger, and I'm down here. I've looked at my variables. Right now, nothing is defined because I have not executed any line of code yet. I am about to execute the line of code. And I now see that I have something called my empty list. Python will tell me that it's a type list. It has zero elements. If I click the arrow by that, the len is zero. That's the only property right now. So I can create a populated list. I now have my list. Python tells me it's a list. It's a size three. These are the three things in the list. So now I'm going to print my list of zero equals. I'm going to print what's at my list of zero. Now I can learn what that is by simply selecting the down arrow. So you'll see at zero, I have Lisa. At one, I have 42. At two, I have 3.14. So if I go to the console and I print out what I have in my list. So now I want to change. Let's go back to variables. I want to change what's at the index number one, which is the second element in the list. And if you look down here on the lower left-hand side, after I execute that line of code, you will see that the first element is now 25. 42 went away. Same thing here. If I append it, I'm now going to get a third element, so there'll be four total elements in the list. I can delete an element. And if I print my list, you will see the new list. And then I can remove add, and it will print out the new list. So let's see what happens if I break this. Let's just change things a bit. So first of all, I, the only thing I did was take away the right close bracket. And I've got all this red stuff here. But you'll notice on line two, the line I broke, there is no, there are no red squiggly lines. Is everybody muted? Yeah, I don't think everyone's muted. There we go. So, maybe not. Hold on. Uh, who's not muted? There we go. Okay. So all I did, let's just undo that for a second. All I did was I removed that right um, square bracket. So let me do that again. And all of a sudden you'll start to see all these red squiggly lines. And more importantly, when I run it, I'm not going to debug it this time. I'm just going to say to run. I get a syntax error. It says I have invalid syntax at line 7 on my list. Now, when you go and you start looking at your script, 
and you go and say, wait a minute, there's a problem on line seven, and you look at line seven, and you spend an hour looking at line seven trying to figure out what the problem is. There's not a problem on line seven. There's a problem on line two. And what has happened, and this, is, this happens in all programming languages, because programming languages are written by programmers. The first time that Python realized something was wrong was on line seven, but that does not mean that's where the error was. The error is all the way back at line two. So for this particular instance, Python got to here and said, wait a minute, something is unbalanced. And then it said, oh, I'm going to throw out my hands. There's a problem on line seven. But there isn't. The problem is here. So when you, are, when you are debugging your code, when you're running through your code, if you get an invalid syntax and you're looking at that line and that line looks completely OK, then start looking backwards because somewhere before the line that Python is telling you is the error. So I'm just going to put my right square bracket. All my squigglies go away. So, and that was only with just a square bracket gone. So let's see what happens when I remove a comma. I remove a comma, and this is one of those instances where Python can tell me that there's a problem. This tells me exactly where the problem is. This time the problem is on line 7. And um, it's because I'm missing a comma. So those are just some of the common things you can do. The other common thing you can do is you can get an index out of bounds. Actually, let me go this. Let us do this. I'm just going to put a 1 there instead of a, a 0. Now, I don't have. 10 elements in my list. I have three. So I have three indexes, 0, 1, and 2. But I've just changed this to say, give me the element number 10, or give me the 10th element in the list. And I'm not getting any red squigglies, so it's not a syntax error. It's a logic error. Um, I'll show you what happens when I don't add stir. But let me do this first, and then I will, I will remove stir. So I'm going to run this, and I don't have any red squigglies. However, I'm getting list index out of range. And that list index out of range is just saying exactly that. You don't have enough elements in your list for me to get you the tenth because there aren't 11 elements. So that is what this means. It means that you don't have enough, and for some reason you're walking off the end of the list. Now this doesn't seem to be a big deal here, but when you start getting into loops, you need to be very careful. And so you don't want to have, you can't run with an index out of bounds exception. So the next question was, what if I don't do stir? right here. So let's take a look. Well, first of all, let's just run this. Everything runs happy now. So I'm going to remove this. Everything's balanced. Don't have any syntax errors. Let's see what happens. I get a type error. Okay. The type error is telling me that you cannot add an integer and a string because this, because it's in quotes, is a string. This is not a string. An addition of strings means you're concatenating them. And Python will not allow you to concatenate an integer and a string. You just can't do it. So there's two ways to handle this. There is this, which just basically says, this is a placeholder. And in that placeholder, put whatever is in to the right hand side. So let's see how that works. That works just fine. Or I can go back to what I was doing in the beginning, which is to 
add them together, but they have to be the same kind to add them together. And part of the reason I use this format early on is so that students get used to the understanding that there are different types and how to go from one type to another. Um, what's the difference? Not a whole lot. Pop, um, hold on. Pop zero, which is what Zybooks teaches us. There, there isn't a whole lot of difference. Pop just pops the, the top, the, the element off the top of the list. Del you can do for any of them. So I could do Del one. And if I run it, then it deleted the first. I could do pop. Let's see what happens if I pop one. One. OK. So you'll notice that that was a little different. So let us just comment this out right now. We're going to run it again. And so I had Dell Del 1. So it looks like it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. It looks like they're doing the same thing. I'm a little old school, so sometimes I use a little bit of uh, different syntax in Zybooks. Either will get you to the same place. Okay, so why did we just talk about lists? Because a string is a list. And you can do, most of the stuff you can do to a list, you can do to a string. You can create it and read it. You can delete the entire string. The way you update a string is you change, you use a function that Python provides, and it will mo create a new string starting with the old string that has your modifications in it. So CRUD for strings. We have create an empty string. We have create a populated string. We can read it. So this is my string. I'm going to print 0. I'm going to get a T. I can get the 10th element this time because I actually have 10 elements. And it's going to give me an S. I can read and create. So here is something new. I have my stir, same thing I've had before. And, but it's on the right-hand side of a single equal sign. My new stir is a variable. We know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. What am I doing on the right-hand side of that equal sign? What I'm doing is I am taking the 10th, 11th, and 12th characters from Meister, and I'm copying them into a new variable. And that new variable is, in fact, a different string. So it's a new string. So with that syntax, I have created a new string in my stir that has the, the variables str. And it will be, in fact, a new string. It's going to be 0, 1, and 2 for stir. So that's what this does. So you're reading and creating. And this is called slicing. There are other ways you can manipulate strings. But I'm using a slice, and the slice is starting at the 10th, starting at, at index 10 to 1, sorry, to, to 13 minus 1. So it's always 1 minus the end index. And those are the values I'm going to be getting. So let's look at challenge 2.9.1 really quick. Okay, 2.9.1. So. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. And by the way, all of these functions, that all of these Python scripts are part of, will be part of the description. And just because I wasn't here last week to say it, challenges are not part of your grade. 
I encourage you to do what challenges you can, but you are not graded on them and they are not required for this class. So I've got my little breakpoint at line one. I'm going to set my configuration to 2.9.1. 2.9. Okay, can't see again. Area 2.9.1. And so I'm going to run the debugger because I like the debugger. So I'm going to go back to my variables and I'm going to start walking over each line of this Python script. And I'm going to, when I do that, I'm executing each individual line. So I've got, a, I've got I'm waiting for an input. So the start index I'm going to say is 3. And then I'm going to step over that again. And the index, index, index will just say is 7. So I'm going to go back to my variables. I have end index and start index. And now I'm creating my rhyme lyric, which is the cow jumped over the moon. So that's my string. I just created a string. So now I'm going to create a new variable called sublyric. And I'm going to go from the start index to 1 minus the end index. So when I do that, you'll see down here on the lower left-hand side of the screen a brand new variable called sublyric. And sublyric is a brand new string. And it has the word cow in it. And then I'm just going to print sublyric. So that is what slicing does, and that is how you create a new string from an existing string. Because sometimes you don't want the whole string, you just want bits and pieces of it. Okay. Whoops, wrong thing. There we go. All right, so a little bit more about string slicing. By the way, why am I talking about string slicing? Because you're probably going to have to do it in a lab. Um, string slicing is very handy. It allows you just to slice and dice strings. So there's some, uh, there's some shorthand. You can simply say, uh, from my stir, get everything starting at index 8 till the end. And that's what that syntax that you're seeing does. When there's nothing after the colon in a slice, it simply says get, it, get everything to the very end of the string, starting at index 8. So this shortcut basically says starting at 0 at index 0, get me everything up to the index uh, sorry, up to, in this case, 4 minus 1, which would be the index 3. So those are two shortcuts. They're helpful. You don't have to use them. You could always say 0 colon 4, and it would be the exact same thing as saying colon 4. They're just shorthand, and Python loves its shorthand. So there's always two or three ways you can do something in Python. So I'm just showing you a couple of different ways. You don't have to use them, but when it comes to slicing, they might, they might be easier. I'm not sure, but I like to introduce them. So we have all kinds of methods on strings. Because you can't modify a string in place, you have to create a new string from a string. Um, and, and it's just it's also easier to do things like search through a string. So if I say find the first index of a character in a string, I use the find function. Find is a, a function that Python gives us. I give it a variable, and it will return the index. So the syntax here is myster. Myster is a variable. It was divine, you know, defined someplace else in your script. I'm going to have the dot in between myster and the function. Because what this is saying is, hey, Python, use the find function on the variable myster, which is a string, and find the first instance of the character s, the lower character s. Because remember, Python is case sensitive. A lowercase s and an uppercase s 
are not the same thing. So that's what the find function does. Okay, so I want to replace a portion of the string. Well, there's a function called replace. What this will do is it will not modify the existing string, but what it will do is it will create a new string with the modification in place. So what this does is say, hey, Python, I'm creating a new variable. It's called my new stir. I know it's a new variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. So it, uh, it is expecting a value to be put into it based on what's on the right-hand side of the single equal sign. Well, what's it supposed to, what's the value that it's supposed to assign to my new stir? Well, I've got an old stir, my stir. I'm going to call the replace function on my stir, and I'm going to take any occurrence of the word this and replace it with the word that. So I want to count the number of, of occurrences of a character in a string. Now it's important, this one might be important just because it's probably in a lab. In fact, there may be why I chose to talk about these string, these string methods, are that they're probably in a lab. Okay, so what I do is there's a count function. I'm going to count the number of occurrences of the character i, lowercase i, in my stir, and I want you to return the number of them. And so in this case, it's three. So those are just some string methods. There are a massive number of string methods that Python gives you. We don't even begin to touch on them in this class. Python.org has wonderful documentation that talks about everything you can do with a string. And in fact, it talks about everything you can do with functions. And there's, it's, Python.org has really, really good documentation. So splitting and joining. So we're going to split a string, and then we're going to create a string from a list. So splitting is the ability to take a string and to turn it into a list. And the way you do that is you decide what the delimiter is. Now, what do I mean by a delimiter? A delimiter is just something unique that separates the values that you want to turn into a list. In this case, it's a comma. It could be a colon. It could be a pipe. It could be the letter Z. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a character. And it has to be a character that you know separates what you want in that list. So in this case, I'm using a comma as the delimiter. I've created a stir called my stir. I know that my stir is a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of this single equal sign, I have a string, and that string has first comma space second in it. Now I want to turn this into a list. And the way I do that is I use the split function. So the split function just does just that. It takes strings and makes them lists. In this case, I'm telling it to use the comma and I'm telling it to do use the split function on my stir. And what do I get? Well, I get a list. My list is going to have the word first as the first index value and the word second as the second index value. Join, you're creating a string from a list. So I have first and second, and I want to join them with nothing between them. So this is a little bit different syntax that we see here. We have my stir, and what we're doing is we're assigning the value of my list with everything joined together in a string, and in this case I'm saying don't put a delimiter in. 
That's why I have the open and close quotes. And what I get in my string is first, second. And you'll see there's no space. So those are two of the other functions for splitting and joining. And there may be a need to do them in one of your labs. OK, string formatting. We talked a little bit about that. Um, yeah, we just talked a little bit about that when we were talking about what would happen if we didn't put the stir, convert the integer to a string in the print statement. And I showed you the open and closing uh, squiggly, yeah, squiggly brackets. There's a lot of stuff you can do with string formatting. And uh, you can tell it how to, you know, print a float with just two decimal places. Um, and it's called parameterized string formatting. And it really does help to make your code more readable, in my mind. So what does this look like down here? What this, looks, this example looks like is it says, um, I, I, I've just got I'm space, open squiggly brace, quote, close squiggly brace, and we'll call those placeholders because I'm having a lot of trouble saying squiggly brace. Um, so I've got a bunch of placeholders. I've got three placeholders. And those placeholders are an, an empty placeholder. I've got one. The next one, it's got a placeholder with a format. And then the other one is just an empty placeholder. So what we're doing here is we're taking everything that's um, inside the parentheses of the format function, and it's going to replace it positionally. So the first argument in float will go to the first placeholder. The second argument in format will go to the second placeholder. The third argument in format will go to the third placeholder. So it is positional. So here's a quick example of what I mean. So I have num, pi, and meister. So I have I'm and it's. So let's take a look at what happens. The output is I'm 42 and it's 3.14 pi day. So that's what happens right there. It just substitutes those. Um, it substitutes the arguments in format positionally for each of the placeholders. So I'm just going to do another example. And I've got num1 is going to the first one. Meister is going to the second. And there's a syntax error. There's a problem here. What is the problem? Remember I said that it's just doing it positionally. So the second one is my stir, but I'm going to one that has a formatting for a float. That's what's inside the second placeholder. That colon dot to f says, hey Python, you're expecting a float, and I want you to only show me two decimal places after the float. Doesn't matter how long, I only want to see two decimal places. So my stir is the wrong type because of that point to f. So I'm not going to be able to run my program. I have to modify. I have to move my stir to float and float to my stir in the function call. So let's look at challenge 2.71. 2.71. And we'll see some of the formatting. Okay, go out and change it. I'm going to change the configuration. 2.71. And I've got a couple breakpoints. I'm going to run this in the debugger. I'm going to put in a word, a number, and a float. And then we're going to see what happens when we use the different, um, a couple of the different formats. And if you want to try something, let me know. We'll be happy to try it. So first, I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to input a word, Mississippi. I'm going to step over that. 
I'm going to put in a number, and that's going to be 3. And then I'm going to input a float, and I'm going to say 4.44, just because. So now, whoops, what did I do? All right, let's do this again. Stop and rerun. Okay, so I'm going to put in Mississippi, step over, I'm going to put in 42, step over, and I'm going to put in 3.14, enter, there we go, step over. So I now, when I do the first one, I'm just doing the user word, which is Mississippi, and the user number, which is 42. And then I'm going to do Mississippi 42 3.14. And there are all kinds of other things I can do, but you'll see why this is positional. So now if I take this one, and let me uncomment this one down here. I'm going to have user float, user number, and user word. So let's just see what happens. I'm just going to run it this time. I'm going to say life, the universe, and everything. And I'm going to input 42. I'm going to input 3.14. 3 and I get an error. And I get an error, unknown format code F for object type stir. So this is what happens when I am trying to use the wrong type with a format specifier. So the format specifier is 0.2F. That's telling Python, expect a float. And I didn't give it a float, so Python's giving me an error. So that's one of the things to look at when you're doing your own programming and you're trying to use these formats. Okay. So let's talk about the labs. Now, lab 2.12, we have not given you enough information. And the school knows that I'm doing what I'm doing. So. Um, because we're asking you to use branching when we haven't taught you about branching yet. They, they mention it a very little in uh, Zybooks Module 2, and it's not enough to get to allow you to be successful. One thing you do want to do is you want to use your format function here for Lab 2.12. And basically what you're doing is if somebody's given you the first, the middle, and the last name, you want to output last name, comma, first dot, middle, initial, first initial, middle initial. If they haven't, if they've just done first name and last name, then you do last name, comma, first initial, dot. And here's the issue. You have to do an if statement. There's no real way to do this without doing an if statement. So for that reason, the solution to lab 2.12 will be up on the YouTube site. And pretty much, this is just a flowchart, and I use flowchart for the first two weeks because I think they're a better visual tool, and we haven't learned pseudocode. You will start, we will start to use pseudocode next week when we go over the labs. So the flowchart basically is just, if you watch the first week's video, it's input process output. So we're going to start by declaring a name, and we're going to input the last name, the first name, and the middle name. We're going to declare a list. We're going to split this stuff. So when you think about this, think about using the split function. And here's what we don't know enough about this if. We'll, use, we'll learn a lot more about that later. If the length of the name list is greater than two, then we're going to output a specific type of format. If it is greater than two, then we're going to output a different format and end. So this is the process for lab two. Um, you'll find the solution in the, descript in the description.
So now let's go to one where we can in fact achieve it with just the information they've given us. So I'm going to write a program whose input string, whose input is a string and it contains a character and a phrase, and whose output indicates the number of time the character appears in the phrase. So we've got two things. First, somebody's going to type in a string. And that string is going to contain a character and a phrase. So we're going to have to split that string so that we can get the character and then the phrase. And then I need to output the number of times the character exists in the phrase. That sounds like a job for the count function. So as all uh, with all flowcharts, you start, I'm going to declare my stir. Somebody's going to input my stir. I'm going to declare a list because I'm going to have to split things and I need a place to put it. So I'm going to split my stir into my list. I'm going to declare a care count. And obviously my animation's in the wrong order. Let's go back. Okay. So then I'm going to set the care count to the character count. And this is where you need to look at section 2.10. And for splitting, you need to look at section 2.11. So 2.14. So for 2.14, it has a three part. And this is basically about concatenating strings in certain ways. So you're going to prompt a user. They're going to add, enter two words and a number. And you're going to store each of these in a separate variable. What then you're going to do is you're going to output two passwords. That's the second part. The first password is the, a combination of the two strings, so the two words, um, separated by an underscore. And the second password is going to be the number the first word, and then the number again. That looks to me like it is the appropriate place to use the dot format function on your string. And you should not need any format specifiers. The next thing to do is output the length of each password. That indicates that you might want to create each password and put it into a variable so you can use it again. So let's go look at the flowchart. So I'm going to declare word one, I'm going to declare word two, and I'm going to declare a number. And then somebody's going to input word one, they're going to input word two, and they're going to input a number. And then we're going to declare a variable called password one, and a variable called hmm, password two, getting a little tongue tied. I'm going to set password1 to num word num and password2 to word1 underscore word2. And then I'm going to output password1. I'm going to output password2. I am going to output the length of password2 and the length of password1. And I'm going to stop. So that's the basic program flow. That And now, Understand that with flowcharts, it's not showing you exact lines of code for Python. What it's doing is it is giving you a language agnostic pattern to follow. Um, oh, and here we go. This section, is, these are both uh, Zybooks 2.7 if you need to look at them. So that is what I have for you guys tonight. Is, are there any questions? You can open up your mics, we can talk, do whatever you want. But um, so do, does anybody have any questions? Going once. Going twice. Okay, I'm glad that helped. I'm going to end the call and this will be up tomorrow along with everything else that we saw tonight. So have a good night, everyone.